Hey everybody, happy Monday. Now today we're going to talk about why we can hate being alone. But before we jump into that, are you new to my channel? Welcome. I'm a licensed therapist and I create videos all about mental health and I am now releasing videos only on Monday so I can put more time and effort into them. So make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you don't miss out. Okay, now let's talk about the fear of being alone, otherwise known as monophobia. Monophobia, like all phobias, falls under anxiety disorders, under that umbrella, which is really important to remember because phobia itself is defined as an extreme or irrational fear or aversion to something. But that in many ways, obviously, these fears can lead to symptoms of anxiety. You can feel on edge, wired, or worrying about what's going to happen if you have to face that fear. So just remember that all phobias fall under the category of anxiety disorders. The specific fear of being alone can have many causes and risk factors. The most common of those are past trauma, abusive or just unavailable parents, and lack of proper attachment as a child. Because there are so many different causes, there will obviously be many variations of monophobia. But today I wanna to talk about the three that I see most. And the first is that we could fear being alone in public, like many with social anxiety or agoraphobia experience. We can worry that other people are talking about us or that we won't be able to get out of there quickly if we feel a panic attack coming on. Whatever the trigger or worry, having someone supportive with us can offer some relief. And that's why I'm always talking about the importance of having a support system in person so that you can have them with you at a very stressful or maybe even any social event. Now, the second is that we can be too scared to live alone. And I find this to be most common when we have experienced abuse or violence or had parents who were way too involved in our lives growing up. Hello, diffuse boundaries, AKA no boundaries at all. And that kind of upbringing can stifle our ability to feel secure, be on our own, stand up for, and if needed, protect ourselves. And I know it can seem odd that two totally different situations can lead to this similar response, but it's really because both instances take away our confidence, either by hurting us or being overbearing. We never get a chance to really figure out who we are without someone else being involved in it. Does that make sense? Now the third and the one variation I wanna really dig into is the fear of not being in a romantic relationship. We've all known these people or been these people who jump from one relationship to another without much of a break in between. Now we usually do this for one of two reasons. Number one, we may not know who we are without someone else's influence. This can occur because of addiction in the family, because if you didn't know, addiction causes everyone else in the family to dance around the person with the problem. So we can spend our whole lives letting someone else's actions dictate what we do or don't do. In therapy, we call this codependence. And I have a whole video about that if you wanna learn more. But this can also occur if we have someone in our family who requires a lot of attention. Maybe we had a sibling that required extra care or a parent who didn't act like a parent and treated us like a friend. Or I've called this before, like being the parentified child when you're responsible for your siblings and stuff like that. And yes, I have a video about that too. So you can watch that if you're curious, but whatever it is, we have never been given the chance to figure out who we are or what we want without having someone else weigh in on it. Now, the second reason is that we may not like being alone with ourselves because that would mean that we have to recognize or address what's really going on. We can use relationships as a way to distract from working on ourselves, which really just means that our relationships aren't ever built on a solid foundation. That's why we hear that phrase all the time, can't love someone else if you don't love yourself first. And it's not as, as cut and dried as that, but there is a lot of truth to that statement because we can't find someone who is good and healthy for us if we don't know what that looks and feels like, you know? And I don't want you to judge yourself because of this or think that makes you a bad person or a bad partner or anything like that. It's just something to be aware of because once we know it's happening, we can overcome it and go on to build healthy and happy relationships. Trust me. So without further ado, let's get into how we can work through this. 
Now, the obvious first step is to get into therapy and start figuring out what triggers your fear of being alone. Is it your parents were too involved in your life? Or perhaps you were abused? Maybe you had to be the adult in your household from a very young age. If you aren't sure what caused it, or just the thought of trying to figure it out feels overwhelming, maybe consider what role you played in your family growing up. That can sometimes help you see patterns or issues that maybe you wouldn't have noticed otherwise. And if you are in therapy already, you can let them know that you're trying to figure this out. They may have some clever questions they can ask to help you see things more clearly. Once we know what triggers it, therapy can help us find ways to heal or overcome it. This could be through reparenting yourself, processing the abuse you sustained, or building up your self-confidence. But we have to know what caused it first. And my next tip, and it kind of connects with my first one, is to start noticing your triggers. Are there certain times you want to reach out to that old boyfriend or girlfriend? Specific situations that cause you to get online to flirt or go out with the goal of meeting someone. The more we know about our triggers, the better we will get to know ourselves. And I know that sounds odd, but if we aren't able to pinpoint what it is that's causing us to hate being alone, tracking what triggers the impulse can lead us right to it. And I just have to insert this here because it really needs to be said. But who said being in a romantic relationship is in any way better? Who said being single is bad? Because those are complete lies. So just notice the stories you tell yourself about being alone or with someone. And remember that only you can give yourself the love you need and deserve. Everyone else in your life can only add to that, but they won't be able to do that if we don't know how to do it for ourselves. And I just get annoyed with people feeling like I should be married by now or be in a serious relationship or have kids or whatever. Who said there's a time frame on happiness? Would you really be happier if you had settled for a relationship that isn't what you really want or need? Probably not. It's so much better to wait until you feel good about you and are able to find someone who's deserving of all you have to offer. Okay, back into the tips. I just had to add that in. Okay, third, build up a non-romantic support system. Since we may have a habit of hiding away in our romantic relationships, focus most of your energy on building up your other supports. This could be online or in person, just as long as it's platonic and supportive to both people involved. And just try to be aware of whether you're treating your friends like they are your romantic partner, like expecting them to hang out with you all the time and return texts right away. It can be hard for us to have healthy boundaries in any relationship at this point. So just be aware of this and do your best to be okay with your friends having other friends, because that's normal, and having their own life because they can still make time for you. They just have time for other things as well. And that's really healthy. And my final tip, Spend some time getting to know yourself. If we have always been in a romantic relationship or letting others decide things for us, we may not know who we are or what we like or don't like. So you could start by journaling a bit about the goals you have or things that you like and don't like. Going for walks by yourself or even taking yourself out for dinner. I know, imagine that. And that one actually used to be one of my favorite things. So. You know, it can be so freeing and just feel really nice and give it a try. And you can also track your feelings each day. You know, use a feelings chart and try to circle three to five that you felt that day. Or pick a few things out that you want to try, like learning a new instrument or joining an adult sports team. See what you like and do your best to try something you haven't thought of before. I know many people whose parents are overbearing or abusive push their own beliefs onto their children. So even if you've been told your whole life that you aren't creative or you aren't athletic, know that you most definitely could be. You just never were given the chance to try it out. I hope you found that insightful and helpful. It's so common to hate being alone, but there are things we can do to ensure that we don't jump into relationships just to fill a void from our past. And as always, was there anything you felt I left out? Do you think there are other reasons that we can hate being alone? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will see you next time. Bye.